Metcalf's law has been widely cited lately as a kind of a counterpoint to the idea that Bitcoin's meteoric rise is going to be followed by a cyclical sell-off. I don't know how strong that is, uh, but maybe there's something to the argument that we should take the time to explore. Hi everyone, my name is Dana and the thesis of my channel is to slow down and take a closer look at some of the big themes that I think are really driving the crypto revolution. Uh, I, I do this mostly for my own edification and to organize my thoughts. If you like the content, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, I would love to have you along for the ride. All right, so Metcalf's Law, a model for predicting exponential growth. And, you know, exponential growth is one of those things that is extremely difficult for us humans to really wrap our brains around. For example, take a penny, double it every day for a month. At the end of the month, you have multiple millions of dollars. If you keep doing that for another month, you have more money than is even exists on planet Earth. So what is Metcalf's Law? I actually found a video of Robert Metcalf himself explaining it. So let's have a look at that real quick. This diagram argued that the, the cost of the network is linear in the number of nodes that you buy. But the value of the network is based on the number of connections that you can make with that network. And the number of such connections is each node can connect to n minus one other nodes. So the value was n times n minus one or approximately n squared. So that's the quadratic going like this. Can I use the word quadratic? So there's the quadratic, and what happens to the quadratic that eventually passes the linear, so you have that critical mass point. So we argued that the three node networks were below critical mass, and the goal was to get your network above critical mass. Fifteen years later, that slide was called by someone else, not me, Metcalf's Law. That is, the idea that a network grows in value as the square of the number of its participants. Robert Metcalf was the inventor of these networking cards that you stick in the back of your PC computer and it forms <clears throat> what was called an Ethernet. And uh, Ethernet was a really cool thing. It would pool a bunch of computers together basically and give them access to shared resources such as printers, um, internet, um, servers, and they were really popular in the late 90s, early 2000s in sort of small office settings. Metcalf found that the, the value of these small networks was actually disproportionately large compared to the cost of the individual cards. So he came up with a formula that's you know really interesting. It's the cost of the cards, right? Um, if you were to plot them, they would be in a linear flat line. And the more cards you buy, your costs kind of go up in a straight line. However, the value of the network is proportional to the square of the number of users. So each additional user of the network increased its overall value in an exponential curve. For example, if you have you know, four users in the network, then the value of the network is 16. If you have five users, it's 25. If you have six, it's 36. So you see, by that calculation, if you plot that out, the value of the network is going up in a curve. So, you know, it took until the 21st century to formally identify this network effect and give it a name, but in fact, it is a basic feature of human society that has existed for millennia. Think about language, think about religion, think about money. You know, all of these phenomena have leveraged network effects in order to succeed. Today, there are actually 12 different network effects, each of which is discussed at length in the Network Effects Manual published on NFX.com, which I'll link to below. 
But today we're going to focus on protocol network. A protocol network is super interesting, right? It's, it's, it's a communication or computational standard which nodes can be plugged into slash connected into. And, you know, the Ethernet is a perfect example of a protocol network. A fax machine is a protocol network. Each fax machine is part of the, is a node in the network. And, um, you know, the internet is also uh, the classic protocol network. Bitcoin and Ethereum are also protocol networks. However, there's something very important about crypto protocols that set them apart from the first generation of internet protocols. So HTTP and STMP, SMTP, the email protocol, these were not monetized. Okay, so these technologies were developed as a sort of utilities. And then the layer on top of them was monetized, right? The applications that were built for the internet, like Google and Amazon, so on and so forth. Those were the things that came along and really became the most commercially viable, literally the most profitable organizations on planet Earth. So what the blockchain introduces is the concept of a token enabled protocol. And the blockchain maintains central control over what it calls its tokenomics, AKA its monetary system. And its system, this is a system for addressing, um, you know, identity, wallets, naming, all sorts of other things. And the blockchain has effectively redistributed the value from the nodes, right, back to the protocol itself. Like imagine if you had been able to buy shares in HTTP back in the early 90s. And imagine what those shares would be worth today. It's hard to even comprehend that. But that's where we sort of are. So here's a quick illustration of how Metcalf's law might apply. According to blockchain.info, which first started tracking the price of Bitcoin and the creation of Bitcoin wallets back in 2011, shout out to Andreas Antonopoulos for pulling that together. Uh, in the late in late 2011, there were 369 Bitcoin wallets and the price was around $2. In late 2017, there were just over 20 million wallets and Bitcoin's price was approaching $10,000. Today, with 100 million Bitcoin wallets, the price just crossed the 60K mark and then came back a little bit. But if we were to plot the uh, wallet count and the price of Bitcoin on a line, it looks very close to Metcalf's chart. And of course, you know, if you've been around for a while, you might say, well, those points that I mentioned, right, 2011, 2016, sorry, 2017 and 2021, they very conveniently missed the price spike of 2013 and the massive pump and dump of 2018. And you'd be correct. But the, you know, so granted, the price curve in truth has not been super clean. But I want to show another clip real quick of Robert Metcalf, which may give us some insight as to, you know, those price spikes and um, even the current one maybe. A Dlisko claim Metcalf's law was dangerous because it inflated the internet bubble in the year 2000 and caused this big overinflation because everyone thought the networks were going to grow with value n squared, and it turns out they, I guess, they didn't, and so the bubble crashed, and it's all my fault. <laughs> now, is it a perfect analogy? Probably not, but, you know, I do believe that the metaverse and the digital economy will continue to grow and much like the internet did 
maybe not in a linear, you know, or even a perfect curve. It's going to be bumpy. But I think Metcalf's law definitely does something to explain what has happened thus far and what I believe will continue to happen. So, you know, to those still waiting for a massive correction in Bitcoin or even a reversion to the mean, you know, I would just, you know, point to the FANG stocks and they never did correct. Why do you think that is? It's not because, it, you know, the reason is because they're not really normal companies. They are networks. And the old rules like PE ratio and reversion to the mean, I don't think they apply here. Once these networks are created, they're extremely difficult to stop. Maybe impossible. You know, look at XRP, like the SEC tried to kill it. Um, it seems to have just made it stronger. I think XRP is at like a dollar fifty again. So, you know, same thing with Ethereum, Cardano, Binance, uh, Chainlink, all these companies that are currently vying for a niche in the crypto sphere. Um, their, their utility and availability is on the rise. And with that, their value will rise as well. So that's my take on Metcalf's law applied to Bitcoin. Thanks so much for watching to the end. And um, here's the philosophical quote. It is from Alex Vikolov, the author of Intelligent Supernova Essays on Cybernetic Transhumanism, The Simulation Singularity, and the Syntellect Emergence. <laughs> Here's the quote. By our very nature, we humans are linear thinkers. We evolved to estimate a distance from a predator to the prey. And advanced mathematics is only a recent evolutionary addition. This is why it's so difficult even for a modern man to grasp the power of exponentials. 40 steps in linear progression is just 40 steps away. 40 steps in exponential progression is a trillion. It will take you three times from Earth to the sun and then back to the Earth. Thanks guys.